What is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today, we're going to talk about a ton of stuff, uh, including uh, the backup. Now, we're going to talk about how cargo has completely stopped out of G-Land over there and uh, what that means for us. This is really bad. Again, once you see uh, uh, the actual pileup that we're going to show you later, you'll realize what is really going on. Uh, we'll be right back with that and much, much more right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today, we have a ton to go over, so if you are new here, remember that you can always go over to marfugalnews.com and follow along. Now, when you go there, you will see that it is all organized by thumbnail. You'll look for today's thumbnail. That is a representation of all the ships uh, stuck outside of Shanghai. <clears throat> And once you click on that, you will find that you will have a full bibliography of all of our sources, including every single picture, article, tweet, video, uh, document that we're going to show you here today is going to be available there. Now, once you hit a yellow bar, that is web-only content. That is the stuff that is too hot for TV. Uh, there is an es essentially a whole other show there. Now more people are going to the website uh, than actually come to the live show. So again, make sure to go over there and check it out. There is essentially everything collected into one spot for you to go see. Uh, lots of shocking things there, again, that some platforms are not even happy uh, you knowing about. So make sure to go check that out. And then over on the right side are affiliate boxes. Basically, uh, we are controversial and we're in the news category. So we do not get treated like normal channels. Uh, we are covering, we're competing with uh, companies that have, you know, partnerships and agreements, right? Uh, so again, we will never trend. Uh, we won't, you know, see things like that because of what we're covering. If you want to help support, we are independent. We are truly independent. We don't even have a multi-channel network or even a multi billion dollar company behind us uh, you can go over and purchase any of the things over there and then that sends us a small commission and in most cases you get a small discount so uh, let's uh, bring in my co-host slash internet brother Dex James what is going on and how are you doing today and hello Fugle fam I am doing just fine so we have a lot to cover. We're going to be going over the cargo ships. We're going to be going over everything that is happening in Ruski land. We're going to hap, uh, happen to talk about uh, some Elon Musk tonight uh, and his new Tesla bot. There is a ton. So stick around. It says American phone tracking firm demoed surveillance powers by spying on CIA and NSA. So essentially what they did is uh, they... Uh, showed how good this thing was by spying on our own NSA and CIA. It said that in the months leading up to <laughs> invasion of UKR, two obscure American startups met to discuss a potential surveillance partnership that would merge the ability to track the movements of billions of people via their phones with a constant stream of data purchased directly from Twitter. It says, according to Brendan Clark of Anomaly 6, or A6, the combination of its cell phone location tracking technology with the social media surveillance provided by Zignal Labs would permit the U.S. government to effortlessly spy on Russian forces as they amassed along the UKR border, or similarly track Chinese nuclear submarines to prove that the technology worked. 
It says that Clark pointed A6's powers inwards, spying on the NSA, the National Security Agency, and CIA using their own cell phones against them. So, and by the way, uh, Dex, did I hear it right? Did they say uh, data purchased directly from Twitter? Because that would kind of open up why somebody would want to, say, attain Twitter, right? Or some, well, uh, a yeah, company the, like Twitter it. has a ton of data. They always have. Uh, it's, it's a huge amount. Just the, just the amount of tweets that are out there. They all have location data on them. They all have uh, mobile information on them that are in the app itself if you're using the app on a phone. And it's not just Twitter. I mean, let's not throw just them under the bus. All apps uh, have that. And especially the big one, the book, right, has more because there's, you know, like a ton more people on that app uh, than on Twitter. So they both have a ton of data that they... Uh, either sell for marketing purposes or um, license for uh, other technologies, or in this case, uh, you know, used for cell tracking. Now, in theory, it should be anonymized, but it sounds like these people have their own ability to non to use other non-anonymous data to track cell phones. So it, it kind of makes me laugh that that people like uh, gave us crap when we started our email service. We get an email, which again, anyone can create a fake email and sign up for our email list. Uh, but again, they said, you know, oh, you're getting our email. You're uh, you're collecting our our information. It's an email address. Uh, again, if you have a YouTube account or a Twitter or a TikTok, a TikTok especially. Uh, you have been tracked all over the place, and most likely you've even given up access to your camera. Every single time that you use a photo app like TikTok or, or Snapchat, you are giving them permission to use your camera. Uh, that's the first thing that happens. It pops up and it says, you know, give, uh, I need to, we need permission to use your camera because we're a camera app, right? Well, that also means that uh, back doors could be used to access your camera. And in uh, Facebook's uh, instance, someone actually caught that and they, they put up a video. Now, uh, I believe some legacy media has even verified this because they did it themselves. They had Facebook running on a cell phone and they were able to somehow uh, swipe to the side and they saw that the camera was running in the background at the same time. Uh, it was a glitch and they realized that it was running. And then, of course, when they went to go ask for comment, they were like, no comment. Uh, we'll fix it. It's a glitch. Right. Uh, but we all know it's not. Uh, as far as this goes, it just makes me wonder about, uh, you know, did Elon know this when he uh, started to uh, uh, if or any company like this, if somebody wanted to buy a company like this, uh, what would they do and why would they do that? Right. Would they. Uh, be purchasing it for that reason. Uh, obviously, the guy is already very powerful and one of the richest people in the world. And now he is saying that his new Optimus robot coming out in 2023 will be worth more than Tesla. And it will do all of your chores. We are straight in a sci-fi Black Mirror episode and it won't stop. It just keeps going and it keeps getting worse. And people are going to be excited about this. Uh, this isn't my prediction. I this is this is kind of just a well-known pattern of human beings. Anything that makes things easier for us, we welcome uh, open you know open arms, right? Uh, but this is really really disturbing, and he's saying that this will happen so fast. Well, it almost you almost gives me more credence. Like I don't, I just can't see this happening, right? Well, he says 2023. Hopefully we'll be uh, here in 2023 uh, again. And we're, they're doing and putting all this money into stuff like this when we know we will have another Carrington event hit Earth. We're in Solar Cycle 25, one of the most active cycles we've seen. And again, one of the, the most above predictions that, that we've had in, you know, however many uh, decades, if not hundreds of uh, years. It says Elon Musk has revealed that his upcoming Optimus robot will eventually be worth more than Tesla uh, than the car business. It says the sci-fi droid was announced last year and will look like a human. It says it was designed to perform uh, boring or dangerous tasks for its owner. Optimus is expected to arrive in early form as soon as 2023. And now its creator and the world's richest man thinks it will eventually hmm, Tesla cars. 
It says, I, I was surprising that people did not realize the magnitude of the Optimus robot program, Musk said, speaking during an earnings call. It says the importance of Optimus will become apparent in the coming years. So this sounds like he knows this is going to take off. Uh, it sounds like maybe even government uh, governments have already paid him a sum of money uh, for the first ones. So one thing is is that they've been developing this stuff. If you see the te Tesla factory, they, of course, have a lot of humans doing a lot of stuff by hand. Uh, but he has also worked on these incredible robots that can do very minute and very specific tasks. So I just wonder how good these things are. And now with semicond uh, semiconductor chips and all of the different microchips that go into to now uh, these new robots, how small and how compact they can be dex well yeah and that and you know one of the things we have to consider here is the most important part of the uh, robotics is at this point is pretty much the ai right it's not necessarily the mechanics we've seen robots do backflips lift heavy objects run around like dogs do all sorts of crazy things so the mechanics are are, are there and so to me it seems like battery life uh, which, oh, by the way, you know, Tesla knows a thing or two about that. And then AI. Now they have invested heavily in their AI when it comes to things like autonomous driving. But the the thing that you have to under we have to understand is that that while that um, artificial intelligence has been built to do that, that's just a single task. But the power of their AI is probably what they're leveraging here because it can do so much more. But in a car, it only does one thing. It just drives, right? It's like stay between the lines, stop at the red light, you know, exit here and don't hit the cars beside you, right? It's pretty simple, uh, even though it is still complex, right? But a, but a robot walking around doing your dishes, mowing the lawn, you know, mopping the floor, doing anything that you don't want to do, that's a lot more complex. So I think what they're leveraging is this investment that they've made in AI no, uh, I, and how they're taking that to see, the next level. Here's where I disagree because I saw some pieces on how they were doing their system, right? And they have even gone as far as, so here, here's a scenario that you never want to see, but it is one of the oldest kind of, uh, kind of decision makers for, you know, a human being that a computer couldn't do. And so they have to set up their AI and get this. So if it is self-driving and someday it's going to be completely self-driving, say you have a scenario where the car is driving 40 miles an hour on, you know, doing the speed limit. Uh, two people jump out of the way. Does that car hit the two people or veer out of the way to miss the two people and hit the seven people? Uh, it's kind of like the whole, like, you know, do you, uh, there's two train tracks. There's one person on that train track, uh, tied to the tracks, or there's seven people tied to the train tracks. You know, w what is the conscious decision? Do you let it hit the one person or the seven person, Right. Well, you don't want to do either, but you have to make a choice. And that's what they've been teaching their AI to do. And uh, they've been looking at the sidewalks and all of the stuff that goes on in the world. So I could see them using that technology in this as well. I'm sure there's going to be some people that don't even believe that this is like real for a few years because uh, of how complex it is. Uh, I, and I'm sure there's going to be doubters that say that this is not going to be what it's cracked up to be and that they hype it up and then it ends up being like, a glorified, you know, dishwasher, right? Uh, but I don't know. As far as the money that he has put in these different companies like Neuralink and in SpaceX and in uh, the Boring Company, as far as, you know, what, what they've been doing with the different tech, with the AI, with everything else, with Tesla, and the battery stuff and the robotics that they've been working on, it's almost like Elon is... Um, He's he's trying to evolve, you know, man or something. This is really and a lot of people listen to him like he is uh, he's like this hero. Right. I don't know if he's a hero. I, I, I still have my uh, reserved kind of opinion about that. 
And then Elon has created three holding companies in his attempt to buy Twitter. He's basically all over the place right now. It says Elon has created three separate holding companies on Wednesday as his part of his bid to buy Twitter, according to documents filed with Securities and Exchange Commission. The companies are called X Holdings 1, 2, and 3, and two filings to the SEC state that all of the companies have been directly established to acquire or merge with Twitter directly or indirectly the filings all referred to plan as project x wow and it says musk offered to buy twitter's outstanding stock at 54.20 per share last week valuing the company at roughly 43 billion dollars musk said thursday that he has secured secured over 46.5 billion dollars in financing commitments uh, for his desired takeover at twitter so he he basically he got the uh, the money for it, but then Twitter's board did a uh, poison pill option where they would try to dilute their own stocks to prevent uh, Elon from taking over. Dex? So, Adam, here's one of the scenarios, and I, I think I painted this picture a, a week or two ago as one of the options, uh, but it was more along the lines of bringing multiple investors together. But what he potentially could be doing here by creating three holding companies, and then you take himself personally. So let's go with he owns 9.2%, right? If X Holdings 1 purchases 14.9, X Holding 2 purchases 14.9, and X Holdings 3 purchases 14.9, Every one of those entities has not broken the 15% threshold, but collectively they own 53.9% of the company. So this could be a strategy in which he's creating a, sort of a backup plan. In other words, if they don't accept the, the offer, now that he's got the funding and he's got everything together, if they don't accept the offer, he has a way of potentially working around and, and, and acquiring greater than 50% share of the company without triggering the, um, the, the uh, poison pill, so to speak. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays. I don't know if this is just him rearranging his finances and creating holding companies to start, you know, managing how he's going to, you know, deal with this, or if it's really what I just said, hey, let's split it down four ways and we'll never break the 15%. But it's it might be a, a smart move on his part. Well, we'll see what and what ends up happening. And then, of course, we will follow it as it goes along. All right. And then. I'm sure so I'm sure some are just like tired of Elon but at the same time Elon Musk is uh he is doing some of the craziest stuff that man has ever really done and I that I don't think that's an exaggeration you, you have uh Neuralink possibly connecting a computer with the human brain you have SpaceX going to space uh, privately, right? And then, of course, you have the Boring Company making these advanced tunnels for their advanced electric cars that will supposedly go 150 miles an hour through tubes throughout the throughout the world. So, just I mean, nuts. And that's not even including the uh, uh, some of the other stuff, the the power stuff that they're doing for the grid. Go ahead, Dex. Yeah, I was gonna say not just not just that. Even inside, inside Tesla, it's huge because it's not just cars. They're building autonomous taxis now that can hold multiple people. They've been building autonomous trucks uh, to haul not not just the cyber truck for consumers, but big rigs, right? And uh, and and like you said, the power. So yeah, he's got his hands in a lot of advanced technology and what's coming out. So like him or, or, or you know hate him or love him, whatever, you sort of have to follow it because if you got your head in the sand, you're going to be missing out on what's happening. Yeah, and you're you're going to see. I mean, this is these are things that will change our livelihoods as we know it. Uh, it will change jobs. If you are if you are a trucker, I'm sure you're not happy about the eventuality of of you pulling through a way station behind a robot. I mean, this is the reality of what's happening right now. That is what is going to be down the road, literally and figuratively. So. Uh, not a very good thing as far as because if they can make these robots, think about this. If their Tesla bot is real within, say, even if it's not by 2023, it's in three or four years. You know how fast those years go by. Uh, if you remember, 2012 feels like yesterday. 2001, you know, is feels a little bit back there, but that was over 20 years ago now. So just think about how fast time is moving, and it even feels like it's going faster as far as our poll to uh, our audience. Everybody feels like time is just shooting past us. 
Think about this. Those Tesla bots will replace any kind of regular worker if a company like McDonald's wants to invest in an all Tesla bot uh, store. Then they'll have, you know, 10 or 11 Tesla bots doing the entire work. And there will be no minimum wage jobs because there will be uh, robots essentially doing some of the simpler jobs and tasks. Uh, I mean, they already have these robotic floor cleaners. I know somebody who personally lost like four stores. They they run one of the floor businesses and they said that they're, they've they lost four stores as far as their customers because they got one of those giant robots that, that uh, polishes the floor. So, you know, there's the, some in some ways we're not to that point where robots can uh, replace humans, but that's where he's saying that it's going to be. And then breaking Texas National Guard soldier dies trying to save migrants in the Rio Grande. It says that uh, that Texas DPS confirmed to him that a body had been recovered and that a statement would soon be made after a National Guard soldier uh, has drowned in the Rio Grande in an attempt to rescue illegal uh, migrants making the dangerous crossing into the United States. It says Malugan uh, confirmed that the news of the National Guardsman's death was confirmed and that the soldier had jumped into the water to try to save uh, the migrants who were in distress. So uh, I'm sure this isn't the first time that uh, someone from patrol or someone from the National Guard, which now they have, uh, you know, obviously uh, the, the military branch helping down there, uh, that this has probably happened. Uh, this is one of the risks that comes with coming over uh, among, you know, any other country that tries to come over by sea and drowns or goes in a tiny little boat from Cuba or goes over the border over, you know, treacherous desert lands. So not uh, uh, not great news, and uh, prayers go out to the family of that gentleman who apparently was uh, somewhat of a hero as, as as we hear so far. So we'll keep updated on that. Uh, Dex, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, no, it's the the data is, or the in, information is really limited right now. We'll we'll probably hear more over the weekend, but yeah, sad sad event. You never want to hear that, but obviously a hero. Well, with over 220,000 crossing in uh, in just March alone, there's a lot of chances for something like this to happen. And that number has shot up extremely high in a very short amount of time. And if you have not already, if you are looking at getting long-term survival food, I would highly recommend going over to marfuglenews.com slash prep. Uh, again, if you uh, have not any kind of information on how to do this, uh, I would highly recommend this. This is a very, very easy solution uh, to get yourself prepped. A lot of people don't really know w what kind of foods to get. This is a great solution as far as if you want it just done, uh, if you want it done properly, sealed MREs that essentially uh, the, the food you just need to add water to uh, that stores for years and years, and it's all sealed in nice, storable, stackable buckets. Uh, again, these are great meals. My The sample that I first tried was seven years old, and I thought it was literally from the grocery store. I mean, it was that good. Uh, I thought it was from the, the deli. It was just really amazing. So either way, make sure to go over and check this out. If you are waiting, uh, then I'd highly recommend going and looking at what is happening in the economy what is happening with inflation, and what is happening with suppliers. Uh, most, and we've already had FugleFam members that have gone through other companies, and their companies are telling them uh, that they just can't get freeze-dried foods, they can't get foods for them, and that they will have to delay their order some, in some cases as much as four months. Right now, My Patriot Supply has everything, and they have not raised their prices throughout CV. The one thing they have done is they've taken away uh, some of the discounts, but they just brought back the $150 uh, three months supply discount. So that's $150 off of three months supply, everything you need, uh, all packaged up and ready to go and ready to store. 
Also, they have iodine tablets. If you are one of the few that actually prepare for a nuclear disaster, you can actually get iodine uh, tablets from them. And you can also get water purification. If you don't trust your water or you just have really bad water where you're at, uh, some people have really horrible tap water. In general, most people are not trusting tap water at all now. You can go get an Alexa Pure Pro system from them. And that is, again, uh, very comparable to, say, what people know the brand name of Berkey at a better price. So make sure to go check it out, marfuglenews.com slash prep. And again, that is, again, where you can get the Alexa Pure Pro gravity-fed powered water filtration system. All right, and then D.C. police respond to reports of two bang-bangs fired and two victims. Uh, so this this has happened over the last 24 hours. It says at least two people were sh on Friday in Washington, D.C., prompting a heavy police response, authorities said. The Metropol uh, Metropolitan Police Department said it received reports of shots fired in the 4100 block of Connecticut Avenue Northwest. Social media users reported hearing heavy gunfire in the area. Authorities have not disclosed any information on the victims or what led to the bang-bang. Uh, the MPD issued a shelter-in-place order in response to the threat and said that road closures in the area should be expected. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives said on Twitter that it was also responding to the need to assist local authorities. So by the way, a lot of weird kind of things have gone on in Washington, D.C. It kind of shows you that they're, it seems like they're really on high alert. Uh, they have act, uh, e evacuated the cap because of a rogue plane which turned out to be an actual army uh, appreciation night plane that was dropping off army parachuters into a stadium, but they didn't actually clarify that with the cap building uh, in D.C., and they evacuated the building thinking that this was, you know, because the, the aircraft wasn't responding or they couldn't figure out what it was. They called it an aircraft intrusion. Uh, among many things over the last few years, as far as some of the weird stuff like cars driving up into the fence of the, the White House and things like this. So lots of lots of odd things going on in D.C. Uh, bling, it, bling it on Grammy says, thank you for this program, Adam Dex and Wives. Hey, thanks for shouting out the wives. And then Vicky K. Thank you. Big shout out to Dave and Laura Reed. Appreciate you guys. Love you. Uh, Vicky K, Bear Claws, Jesse the Kid, Renegade Petey, It's J5562, uh, Beer Juice, and the Saxon and Chef Lee. Thank you, guys. Um, and then let's see here. We have uh, Be Real Beast says, Miss the last three days. Verizon was giving me problems. Ilea says, If I had Elon Musk money, I would be working. Oh, I can't see the rest of it. Dang it. Hold on. If I had Elon Musk money. I would be uh, ending world poverty. Is that what it says? Hold on here. Yes, it was, something, it was to that effect. Yes, ending, ending world, world hunger. Hunger, not buying social media platforms. Much love to you, Adam, Dex, and fam. Well, Ilya, maybe he, uh, maybe that's his goal, right? After he buys Twitter, he'll use it to fight crime and, and to end world hunger. Uh, Stephen McMahon says, thanks for all you do, Adam, Adam and Mods. Thank you so much. Uh, Kara Fuse, Luisa, uh, Luis Martinez, Stephen McMahon, thank you. Ninja Squirrel, appreciate you. And then Verizon was down. I'm up and running now. God bless, says Be Real Beast. So Verizon actually never goes down, so that's pretty surprising. I, I didn't know until just a, recently that Verizon is one of the craziest as far as, like, they get reception out in the, the boondocks uh, when nobody else does. That's kind of one of their specialties, right? And then we have uh, Windward, fifth of world's container ships are stuck in port congestion. So I want to show you, uh, let's see here. Dex, can we get the image, the original image? The next, I... next tab. Okay. Uh, okay, it did. So, so check this out. So we'll talk about this here in a second. It says, after signs of progress that the backlogs of container ships stacked up outside ports might be easing, it appears that the trend is reversing itself with lockdowns impacting the movement of vessels at the major Chinese ports. It says congestion appears to be spreading to other ports around the globe. 
So I don't know if you remember this, but President B said that uh, essentially that the shortages were coming, right? They, he also said that we would be making everything in America. And then in that same speech, speech he said that, uh, here's Intel. I'm going to introduce you to the gentleman from Intel. He's going to be bringing a, uh, he, they're going to be building a semiconductor chip factory right here in the U.S. of A. It's really never been his thing to be like, all oh, you know, America, F yeah. Uh, and now all of a sudden he is saying this. Well, most people think it's because we are about to lose Taiwan uh, and by we, the whole planet uh, that gets semiconductor chips from them uh, to China. China will control that once they take Taiwan. And this is just a theory, again, uh, that that's why they are pushing very fast now to get this done in, a, in the USA. Also, why would you say everything will be made here again? Sounds like where where is most stuff being made now? And I mean most. I mean like there's a ton of trade. The world is trading with them instead of us now. Uh, from 1979 to 2021 to 22, there was a huge change. It slowly went from the whole world was trading with the U.S. to the whole world was trading uh, trading with them. And now you have uh, them saying that uh, everything's going to be made here. It sounds like we are about to be in a conflict with Xi, but again, that's just a theory. It says, new data from Windward of the Maritime AI company shows that a fifth of all of the world's container ships are stuck in port congestion. Further, they calculate that a quarter of all of the ships are specifically stuck at Chinese ports. Carriers have been struggling to manage their schedules, which have already shown low reliability. Now there are increasing reports of the number of container ships diverting away from Shanghai, but that is adding to the delays at other ports such as Ningbo, Zhuzhan, uh, due to the added volumes or carriers or resulted to blank sailing. So someone said on Twitter the other day about the whole plane in DC says, it. Uh, somebody said, oh, it ended up being nothing. By the way, I immediately... Uh, after about 11 minutes, we put the false alarm notice up. Uh, but I responded and I said, yes, it's always nothing. And it will always be nothing. And I said, that's what they said about, you know, September of 2001, right? Uh, in fact, before they had information about it and they said, oh, don't worry about it. As far as WW3, that sensationalizes it and makes people afraid and, and taboo to talk about it. It seems to me like there is no, there's there's so much there's so much uh, saying that G is preparing for a all out scale conflict with the USA, and possibly some think that maybe they infiltrated and took over without a bang bang fired right, that somehow they may have took some of the highest offices and something like that you know. But then again, if not, uh, this is a very ser scary scenario. As far as all of the ships that are piling up, this looks like something is about to happen. And maybe it's manufactured, maybe it's man-made, but look at what is happening. Look at these ships piled up. A fourth of all ships are in Chinese ports right now, and, sh and they're shut down. That should scare people. <laughs> Dex? Well, let's not forget the fact that China has invested heavily in other ports around the world, and they did it with the notion that they knew the countries they were working with would not be able to uh, handle the financial deal and would end up turning it over to them, right? Let's not forget they've invested heavily in land, uh, in, in not only just real estate, but farmland and other things here in the U.S., right? Uh, same in other countries in Canada, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, let's let's not, you know, forget that there's also this thing about food shortages going on. Um, that this is, you know, some of this could be food, but most of this is probably more like goods and, and manufactured items. But, you know, we've got that layering onto this, uh, which goes both with, you know, the supply chain of food distribution, but also we've seen the numerous, numerous processing plants that have been hit, right? And we've seen uh, the um, the in the the bird uh, uh, bug that's going around, right? That they've you know killed off tons and tons and tons of chickens and millions and millions of them, uh, and other birds. So all of these things are sort of like coming together. And if you don't see 
the signs of all this, whether it's, you know, you know, some mastermind somewhere strategically putting this together, or if it's just a coincidence of a bunch of bad things about to happen at the same time, either way, it's not a good thing. It's not a good sign for what's to come. Right. If, if folks can't put the, the most simple puzzle pieces together and see everything is happening. This is like Murphy's law on steroids. Everything that could possibly go bad is going bad. Uh, as far as the food processing, we've had that in our uh, web only and some of the overflow from this week because we didn't realize how I didn't realize how personally bad and how many were happening at the same time. I mean, one in, in one instance, a plane. Did we ever find out if the plane actually hit the, the d distribution center? A small commuter plane actually crashed into uh, a dist a food uh processing plant it was that general mills it was general mills here and, and yeah and that that was the second plane crash there was another plane crash earlier uh in in all of the the different um processing plants that were hit there was another one that was a plane crash into it so how often do we ever hear of multiple plane crashes into food processing plants and nobody's talking about it and by nobody i mean you know administration leadership msm you don't hear there's so much starting to you don't hear jb making comments about it he's commenting about everything else and everyone is focused on johnny depp and his and his ex-wife and you know it's like there's a constant thing that uh they want you to talk about at the the water cooler at work so most people are not going to be talking about the, you know, where are they giving us money to do this? They're going to be talking about, you know, did you see Johnny Depp's performance today on court? Or, oh, did you see, uh, did, did you see the slap? There's been a constant, just huge thing that everybody is talking about. And it, people are just completely missing all of this, like really just right out and in your face. Everything food related is being affected everything uh, trans, uh logistical everything transportation related is being affected all the gas prices day by day right in front of our faces everything is is rising so fast that all of a sudden we're going to look around and go oh my god i can't afford to live we're talking about uh the woman caller last night i believe it was last night worked at a car parts store say your O'Reilly's or your uh, Napa Auto Parts or just an example. We don't know which one, but either way, one of those, right? Said that they've been getting new stickers with giant leaps in prices every week. If not every week, every two weeks. So you're, you're talking about, uh, and that's just one little instance, like antifreeze and oils going up and jumping 60%. We're talking about milk, milk and farmland and all of the farms having their their floods and their issues all at the same time. Then you're also having the, the poultry, the chicken, everything else that's happening. And now you have this. This is one of the most serious things out there. Th those processing plants are the one of the most serious things out there. People don't realize it until it's too late. They say, well, well, we'll, we'll deal with it if it's you know a little bit more or gosh, if we even have to spend... You know, oh, it's going to be tougher. No, we're talking about like it's going to get bad. And it's not to scare people. It's to make you aware that this is this is what 99% of people are not paying attention to. Do you think that Shanghai is really closed down for what they're closed down? Think about that. That's what makes me think we're about to go to conflict with them. They 25 million people. You've seen the... the of them screaming out the windows like let us out draconian drones flying over saying you know quell your desire for freedom and stop singing idiots and you think that's because they want to quash the whatever people need to wake up real fast and family members need to be told like if you have to you know go go um go help them Help them get prepared. Have a plan. And it's just in case, right? Just say it's a responsible thing to do. Ask your family members. Say, hey, do you have car insurance? Oh, well, why is that? Oh, well, I might get in a car accident. If I do, 
I'll have something to back me up. Do you have life insurance? Well, yeah, just in case I die. Okay, do you have home insurance? Well, yeah, just in case of a fire. Okay, so why why don't you have uh why don't you have food insurance? Just in case there's no food. Just in case uh you you don't have anything. Why don't you have prepping supplies? You have every other kind of insurance, right? You probably have uh, they probably pay that same amount they pay to insure their big screen TV and make sure that it's covered. And if, if a little line gets put in it, that they can take it back to Best Buy and fix it. That for that same price uh, per month, you could probably get uh, enough food every week. If you did it up until something bad happens, you would have yourself some good prep. But people don't pay attention to it. They don't buy anything extra. They buy what they need, and that's it. And especially now with prices are just just careaming out of control this is serious and people need to pay attention to it so yeah this is and there's i mean this is just this is one of the biggest things ever if you don't know about the processing plants go look at all of the ones that have caught fire and what does that mean that means they're not going to be producing they're going to uh they're going to be short on the quota the quotas are not going to be met and not to mention uh, all of the other things that are hitting all at the same time. When JB said that, that was one of the truthfulest things that he said. The shortages are coming, and they're not lying. And the one part they might be lying about is why they're happening. <laughs> Who knows? And then Shanghai lockdown. Whole communities relocated in an anti sivu drive. Right? The Civ. It says the BBC has been told of fresh efforts to relocate entire communities in areas of Shanghai as Chinese authorities enforce extreme measures to try to stop a new wave of the call. It says an official notice from local party officials in an area in the north of the city details orders to transfer residents to quarantine facilities more than 100 miles away. The plan is to move people from their homes in Ping Wang to neighboring province of Zhejiang, where they will stay for at least a week. Young children, the elderly, and those with disabilities could be excluded, according to the notice. Now, can I ask you, so if anyone else notices, um, Dex, if you can, Ilya said that, go look at Elon's tweet just now. I Yeah, I, I saw it. You can pull it up. It's just front one if you want but but it but the, let me you so, look at what's happening yeah, here though you, they're moving million uh possibly millions of people right yeah but they, did you notice that there's certain types of people they'll leave behind and did you notice they're not moving the sick they're moving the healthy okay why that's that, that's kind of um you know and and the people that they're leaving behind you know young children and elderly so that means they're keeping the, you know, the healthy workers, so to speak, right? Maybe people they need for a wartime economy. Maybe people they need to ensure that, you know, what's about to happen next are in a safer location away from Shanghai. I don't know. Think about it. Why would they be moving millions of people out and to a different location? Shanghai is a major place that would be hit. This is some freaky stuff, people, because if you if you know, you know, I mean, like. Do you think it's because of the other reasons, right? When think about this there, you could say everybody is just saying, well, it's because they're just really, really, you know, that uh, zero policy, right? Right now in the USA, everybody's walking around like it's nothing. There's basically nowhere where you have to be doing anything. And they're doing this. Wake up, people. This is this is this is it. And nobody is going to know until it's last minute because they're gonna believe the over the yelling of the legacy media saying everything is fine. Dex. Well, look, this is the other thing. In the last week, this in this massive city, right? I mean, we're talking huge, big, much bigger than New York. It's it's so much bigger. It's you know, um, New York is like a tenth of the size or a twelfth of the size of Shanghai. 
they only had 17 people perish. Now, mind you, you don't want anybody to perish, so I'm unfortunate to hear that. But that's a massive amount of, of uh, concern for a very small number, right? And by the way, the, I, from what I've read, the, the numbers of the people that did go, those 17, you know, had, you know, they were older, they had ailments, they had other things, you know, they fit the, the profile, so to speak, right? Um, so some of these measures they're taking, you just sort of really have to ask, what's really going on here? I think I think people need to to start getting their thinking caps on and and put two and two together. Um, Shirley Millward says thanks for the one thousand in. And then uh, 1K in. Thank you. Um, thank you for your support, Shirley. And then Simply Pony, thank you for stopping by once again. Thank you again. Um, and then uh, Ilea, we'll, we'll look at that here in two seconds. And then Simply Pony, hello, Mother Fooglers. Uh, ABC Def saying, showing support on behalf of my man who listens to you every day. ABC Def, thank you for your support. Thank you, everybody that has popped in. Uh, let's see here. So... Uh, and also, thank you uh, during, it looks like during the show, Chris G, thank you for the PayPal. Uh, and then Survival Living, you know you don't have to do that. And then Sherry, Chicky R, David B, uh, the, over the last month, Jane O, Amanda F, Stephanie S, and Brandon P. Thank you for, for over the last month supporting over there. All right, and then let's uh, look at this recent tweet. Let's see. All right. Um, Dex, I don't. Where where was it put? Oh, I thought you were just gonna go to Twitter and type his name. It's his first tweet, but I'll give you the link if you need it. Hang on. That's all right. I can, I can pop it over. Yeah, it should be easy. Well, easier if I had a keyboard. Um, hold on. Let's see here. It's in, it's in screener. You can grab it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Oh, funky. All right, so I'm going to pull this up for you. This is... Uh... It's like, speak of the devil. And by the way, make sure to follow us over on at Marfugal on Twitter. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh my god. Revolutionizing man. Is that a so real the story with the emoji is that was just released uh, a week ago, I think. Apple. Um and maybe others did too, but I know that the news was Apple had added added it to the um one of the software updates. A man having a baby emoji. Yeah. Of course everybody says it's a beer belly, but we know what it really is. But even the hair flip is uh and the part is is identical, right? <laughs> uh he needs a collar. Somebody needs to fix that. That's horrible. And then the army is to test its biggest interactive drone swarm ever over Utah. So if you are in, we in fact, uh, last night, I want to say we had two callers from Utah. You're going to be seeing or possibly seeing some of this over you. And these are swarms of drones. It says a mix of drones most launched from aircraft will swarm enemy positions 
and soften soften up the landing zone for a behind the enemy lines air assault. <coughs> Wonder why they're practicing all this, right? It says the U.S. Army plans to launch a swarm of up to 30 small drones networked into a swarm uh, later this month over the Utah desert as part of an international exercise deployed from an advanced echelon of dual air assault missions uh, by helicopter-borne troops from the U.S. Army and allied uh, participants. The swarm will be the largest group of interactive air-launched effects, or ALES, uh, A-L-E-S, uh, the Army has ever tested. The mix of Area 1's uh, small air launch tube-integrated unmanned System 600s, or Altius 600, and Raytheon-built Coyote drones will be launched from a variety of aircraft and ground vehicles at the Army's 2022 Experimental Demonstration Gateway Exercise. So... It would be really crazy to see the video of this, and after it's done, we'll try to bring you some of the coverage of it, if there is any. Um, I do not know, since it is experimental. They're obviously publicly talking about it, uh, but will they release that video? If it is, it will end up over on marfuglenews.com, and if you're watching this replay later down the road, uh, you can always go there and use our search bar on marfuglenews.com and see if we have it there yet. It's a great way to find stuff like that. Uh, you could type in Altius, A-L-T-I-U-S, uh, say down the down the line in the future if somebody's watching this a year from now, and it will most likely be on our website, and it will find that article. All right, and then uh, great great way to use that too. I mean, you can type in anything from Bigfoot to um, you know Raytheon, and you'll find all of the shows where we have attached articles and everything that's archived. That's why we do it. All right, and then Christian End Times says, I have important information on the last days. Christian, I'd love an email, adam at marfuglenews.com or a DM at marfugal on Twitter. Uncommon News 777 says, Blockades are an act of war. And then Simply Pony, thank you again. I appreciate that. Uh, blockades, yeah, well, there's plenty of acts of conflict going on. If, if you look at the red lines that they've drawn and then erased... <laughs> Or at least that's what it seems like. All right, before we talk about Vlad is seen gripping a table amid cancer battle rumors as he meets slurring defense minister. I, and by the way, that's it's like they're trying to make them look as bad as possible, right? Before we talk about that, I do want to remind you, if you do not have protection against an EMP or a CME, this is what you need to go do. Go over and... and uh, Learn about EMP Shield. This is an actual uh, device that can actually ground the signal from either a Carrington level event uh, CME uh, and plus or all three phases of an EMP before it's able to fry your device. In fact, it can do it in a picosecond. To put it in perspective, that's 500 trillionths of a second. That's trillionths of a second uh, before it can fry your device. Uh, this company... Uh, actually, after we ended up working with them, they ended up uh, getting a bunch of contracts with agencies like DHS, DOD. In fact, when we started with them, they were hand making them out of a tiny building in Kansas. Uh, now, of course, they are still hand building them, but now they have a, a lot more than that. In fact, uh, uh, T-Man signed an executive order essentially saying that they needed to harden the grid now. And he made a statement that it was incredibly vulnerable and he couldn't believe that we weren't doing it sooner. Uh, he signed that executive order. EMP Shield was one of the companies that they ended up calling. In fact, they were on the EMP Resilience Report that told every American, DHS told every American to have six months to a year worth of food in case we have a full grid down scenario because it was one of the top uh, the top most likely uh, scenarios as far as like a really bad thing happening. So, again, to sum this up, if you want to protect your car, you can get one for your car. It's one of the easiest to put in under 10 minutes. If you want to protect your house, you can wire this into your house. Uh, you would want to get a um, uh, licensed electrician to do that for you. Uh, you can get this for your boat, your ham radio. Uh, again, most you can do yourself. Again, these things are absolutely a blessing, and I believe that they will save lives in the future. 
Uh, make sure to go over, check it out. It is a veteran-owned business. It's 100% American-made. And you get $50 off per device. So if you end up doing all of your cars or your house, your car, your generator, your solar system, uh, you can end up getting uh, 50, 100, 150, depending on how many you get, you can stack those. So again, make sure to go over marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Every purchase helps our channel. Again, we do not, we're not suitable uh, for regular advertising and things like that. So again, thank you for uh, going over there and supporting. Uh, Dex, do you want to talk about Vlad? And then I have to change something in the background here. So if you can talk about Vlad and this cancer battle rumor here. Dex, are you there? Sure thing, Adam. Yeah, I'm here. I've had a technical problem. And, and go ahead and scroll down to that uh, the picture while I uh, talk about it. So um, obviously, we've heard lots of uh, rumors about him having um, potentially having medical issues, whether it's cancer or something else. All these rumors keep floating around. So he's been seen here uh, just recently. Um, and, and what they're referring to, and uh, this is the media referring to it as bloated and slouching and gripping the table. Um, and, and he's also meeting with the, the defense minister who also had a, a medical problem. Um, and they were both slurring, uh, reportedly slurring their speech and, and stuff. So, you know, this is, and that's Sergei Shogu. Uh, and so anyway, this is sort of just adding to that uh, that talking point that's been floating around for about a month now that there may be some health issues going on there uh, in Bear Country. So with Vlad, so we'll have to, you know, we I don't think we're gonna know he's gonna come out and say it if he really was. I don't think that's that's what he would do. Uh, but I think some of the other things were sightings of a specific doctor that had been seen with him all the time and all you know lots of different locations where he'd been traveling for the last year. You'd always see this one doctor that was there and he was a cancer list or something like that. Um, and, you know, other things like the puffy face and other actions that they said have happened that they could just sort of, I guess, these people are diagnosing from photographs, but, you know, that's what they're, how they're coming up with this theory that he may actually be uh, sick, have some sort of ailment. Okay, well, or he's pushing the button to uh, drop him down a hole like Dr. Evil. Um, but I love how they... <laughs> They did these like these red words, like arrows. Like this is a professional company. This isn't like a YouTuber doing this for a thumbnail. This is like a professional company, and they're like, and they put two arrows going slurring words, uh, bloated face and neck. Well, if he's sitting like this, that doesn't mean that. I mean, that could just be that he's anybody sits like that. They're gonna have a, a double chin. Uh, especially in a suit. I'm sorry, but if you've ever worn a suit as a man, if you sit like this, then your your shirt, even this thing, would go like that, you know? So they could be overlooking into it. I, I honestly thought the first time I saw this that they were going to say untied shoe. Like, <laughs> you know? At least he doesn't have like a crazy flapping comb over or something. Uh, but yeah, slurring words here. Here's the thing we know from having callers that have had heart attacks or something else that, you know, you just don't, um, uh, I try to hold, withhold judgment on, on people that have a slur. I don't automatically think that they're drunk. They could have issues or speech impediments or whatever else. Um, and then the gripping of the table, they could have caught a, a single second where he's grabbing it. I don't know. I, you, I, uh, you could. They say the picture's worth a, a thousand words, right? Um, I would like to see the video instead of a picture that's taken out of context. Uh, but, but I mean, the claim here is that he has cancer and that he's dying. That's scary because what would a dying man do? And if he really does have this dream of reuniting the USSR then, you know, maybe they would go a little bit further than, say, somebody who was thinking that they're going to live until they're 100, right? He probably has the best health care in the world and probably has the cure to some of these cancers. So it's, you know. And then a Russian general lets slip a secret plan to invade another country and seize UKR's entire coastline. So... Dex, you want to talk about this? This is uh, 
do you think this is propaganda or do you this think is, this is scary? Yeah, this is the this is the same thing we've talked about before. Uh, except when we talked about it before, it was um, the president of uh, Belarus, um, Belarus, who had it up on the uh, the map, right? Um, so what 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 they're saying is, uh, you know, this this notion that they had plans to go into Moldova, um, and in addition to the corridor with you know Donbass and the other locations, so. Um, you know, I guess this is probably really a, a secondary confirmation of that whole Moldova um, uh, idea that was being floated around. Because when we just saw Moldova in the past, it was on a map in the background. It wasn't like anybody said it, but we were just everybody was inferring, well, there's these red lines and those red lines sort of show, you know, where troops would potentially move. Right. So that's why they everybody speculated that that meant that. Well, now there is yet another admission of it. Uh, or a slip, if you want to call it, uh, stating Moldova. So, well, and by the way, it, it wasn't just a red line; it was a an arrow. And anyone that was looking at that from a military perspective, or at least we had military folks say that this is a military style map. It even had current U.S. Uh, they had like Fort, um, what was it, Fort Lewis or something, soldiers. They had their actual symbols of actual U.S. brigades on the little kind of symbol symbol thing that, um, what do they call it, the, the key. And it showed, like, what this symbol meant. And over here it would say, you know, this symbol meant this is the first regiment of the U.S. And it showed the border, the border countries and where the U.S. had their troops. It wasn't Fort Lewis. It was like Fort McCord or one of the one of the different ones. I can't remember which one it was on there. But a bunch of military uh, members in our chat said, "Look at that. That's that's current. That's where, you know, that's where our troops are." Which that said that this giant map that the Belarusian president was standing in front of wasn't just like an old map. It was printed up for this pr presentation. And it showed them going into Moldova. Now we have this. So is it true? Is it is it Ganda? We don't know. But it definitely uh, it, it matches the previous information from two months ago. And then Vlad wants full control of southern UKR and the Donbass. It says a commander claimed on Friday that Moscow now wants full control of the southern UKR in addition to the Donbass region in the east. The surprise announcement goes much further than the goals uh, President Vladimir Putin uh, had stated publicly and on its surface seems unlikely. So, it, yeah, again, it says if Moscow is able to take over the swath of land, it would cut off UKR's access to the Black Sea, allowing Vlad to influence critical elements of the UKR economy. The plan would also give Vlad's forces another point of access to the pro Moldovan enclave of Transnistria, uh, it says the New York Times reported. And then we have two oligarchs die in mysterious circumstances in 24 hours apart. It says questions look set to be asked after two Russian oligarchs, both linked to gas giants, apparently murdered their wives and daughters before taking their own lives within two days of each other. In both cases, the alarm was raised by the slain family's surviving child. Okay, what do they know that we don't? What was going on with this? Do they know something's about to happen? Are we going to see this a lot more in the next couple days? Is something about to go down? That's my question. Or do, were they on some sort of list and they found out about this list and they were taking themselves out before someone else did? Uh, do they know that somebody's going to come into I, I don't know. Like, this, this is weird stuff here. Um, Dex, what do you think about this? Again, this is uh, two, two found, and they kind of did the same thing, right? Well, yeah, come on. Where, where it is and where it's coming from, it's kind of hard to question, the, or it's kind of easy, I guess, to question the the narrative of, you know, them offing, you know, themselves. So, if they were, if there was some sort of connection um, 
on either side or they were doing something against someone else, I could easily see, you know, that this would have been a target or they would have been a target and it would, they would make it look this way. Right. Well, yeah. And, and then within 24 hours of each other and, and uh, yeah, I, I, I want to know what they were involved in. And of course, yeah. Did they get two to the back of the head? Uh, did they somehow do two to the back of their own head? That's the one I want to know, you know, probably not uh i think they're gonna say uh they're gonna say vagastov didn't kill himself that's the new hashtag and then we have deadly blaze ripped through russia's top air defense research lab we'll talk about that here in a second i swear <laughs> this is the second time that that guy's picture has been on a, a random uh no, i, I they, think he's the they author changed their website yeah, they changed their website. They they reformatted their website I know. for whatever reason. The the author's picture is like the default picture now that shows up, and it's well, so yeah. annoying. But it's like it's uh, it's like, I remember his face from yesterday show, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, that guy's he's getting some airtime on our show. Yeah. Uh, he's the author. Yeah, they of the write article. good stuff. You know, they they do a good job. But it's like they changed it. I'm like, oh, this doesn't look that good anymore. We got to look at this guy's face every time. I don't know. Just for men, he could darken that up. Eh, yeah. Hey, their old format had pictures that were relevant to the article, so I thought it would. I like the old site better than the new one, but whatever. <laughs> exactly. Um, and the black and white kind of cliche. Either way, if you haven't already, go over and check out Energy. This this is a solar generator that can be expanded up to ninety six batteries. If you've ever heard of a uh, of a battery wall. Uh, or again, there's uh, competitors are doing walls. This one can actually be added and expanded up to 96 batteries. That is one of the coolest parts about this is that uh, they click together. They basically snap together with an actual metal, uh, the, the clips. So you can stack one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you could stack as, uh, uh, in theory, as high as you want, uh, but you can also connect them side to side. Uh, so it is modular and... Uh, that is, is so incredibly powerful because you are not limited to the built-in battery of a solar generator. And once it starts degrading, you just have to throw the whole thing out. You can actually just change the battery out. Uh, why solar is one of the best things out there is because it is silent. No one from a block away is going to hear that you have one. Uh, you don't have to have it outside. You can have this inside running. Uh, and it's not going to put off any uh, nauseous or, you know, deadly gases. Uh, and also, uh, normally they have a lot less maintenance. There's no running motors. Uh, now, another great part about this is they actually make very specific mods so you can actually expand how fast you can charge this. So instead of putting uh, four panels out in your yard and charge, uh, you can actually get a mod so you can triple that. So you can put 12 and it charges that same battery in a third of the time. That is really important, especially in the future. If you don't know how much sunlight you may get and you want to get that uh, battery fully charged. Uh, right now, mine can charge in about three and a half to four hours. And that's with four 100 watt panels. Uh, again, if I end up getting the mod, I could charge it in less than that. Uh, it's pretty freaking cool. So again, go over to marfuglenews.com slash energy. There is a waiting list right now. So if you want to get the one of the most coveted solar generators out there, I'd highly recommend doing so. You can get their proprietary foldable, portable uh, solar uh, solar panels, or you can go off and get your own somewhere else. Uh, but the main part is is that this thing is so absolutely incredible uh, that it can it can actually detect what you are plugging into it, and it it can tell you exactly what you are putting out. Uh, it is really an amazing system. So uh, this whole show, all of my uh, power is run out through this now the energy i've got two power bars all of my lights all my music stuff is running on it one energy 1500 flex so again go check it out that's marfuglenews.com slash energy make sure to use the code marfugal that way they know that we sent you and that way we can get a credit for it again that's uh that helps us out at the same time i believe in the future this very well could 
uh, save lives or keep you convenient, uh, conveniently comfortable during a very hard time. Now, this doesn't have to be for the end of the world. It could also be uh, for a Californian that has to deal with your state shutting off your power for seven days at a time. Or again, uh, a snowstorm that ends up knocking out your power for a week. Uh, again, this is something that most people are looking into at this point, especially with all the risks to our power grid. All right, that's again marfuglenews.com slash energy. Thank you for all of those who are on that list. All right, and then uh, Dex, the deadly blaze ripped apart the research lab. That's uh, convenient. Well, yeah, it certainly is. So, um, yeah, major fire broke out uh, at this uh, military research center. Um, and, and unfortunately, it, it actually uh, harmed or deceased a few people as well, but and plenty of other injuries. But, you know, I think we have to sort of look at it and go, you know, what happened here? Was it possible something, you know, may have uh, caused this that was, you know, from a from you know, either covert or uh, some other way, or was it just happenstance and did, did a, you know, a fire just mysteriously happen at a place that's in the middle of a conflict with the rest of the world, right? Um, no, nothing to see here, right? Well, yeah, especially if if this was an act of, and we find out that this was done by a uh, third party and something happens here, that could be very bad. And then the UKR situation report, France sends howitzers, Polish tanks could follow. It says more weaponry is pulling into UKR as versus Eastern offensive picks up steam. So essentially the entire world is sending their gear into this conflict. It's basically like NATO versus Vlad. It says French authorities are in the process of transferring an unspecified number of 155 millimeter Caesar wheeled self-propelled howitzers to UKR, according to an interview with French President Emmanuel Macron. That was published today. Separately, uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson says that his government is looking to help facilitate a transfer of Polish T-72 tanks to the UKR military. These are the latest in a string of recent announcements regarding the delivery or planned delivery of artillery pieces or armed vehicles to UKR amid a broader surge in military aid for the country. Yesterday, news broke out that the Slovenian government would be sending a number of M84 tanks, which are derivatives for the Soviet T-72M that were made in former Yugoslavia. While Dutch authorities were working on a transfer of German named P2, PZH-2000, track self-propelled howitzers the german government is set to help facilitate both of these deliveries so all of these countries are sending this stuff like does this not sound like a world conflict to you it sounds like they're getting ready for a massive uh massive thing or are they just all going to a parking lot somewhere by the ukrainian uh 7-eleven i don't know dex well you know the other thing is that i would Go take a look at the stock values or watch what's happening with the in military industrial uh, companies here, right? Because this they've got to be jumping up and down with delight because they just see all of this equipment just being transferred in to, to this zone, knowing that it's all going to get backfilled, right? All of these countries, not UKR, but all the countries that are giving away the equipment to UKR are turning around and buying more, Right. They're saying, okay, great. We got rid of all those old tanks. Now we have to buy them. So it's not like they have to worry about if their constituents and their their you know their public wants them to do that. They're just going to say we have to. So guess what? We get upgrades. We all get we all get new tanks. We all get new you know howitzers. We all get new helicopters or whatever else the next thing is they give away, right? So um, and all of these companies that are making it, they're they're making bank right now. And they're, they chip they're, they're they chip them back. Big orders. And then the politicians that line that up, uh, they get a personal payment back from these uh, military industrial companies, or that's the theory, right? That after they they go, oh, well, we need to order 16 howitzers, that company that makes the 16 howitzers goes, oh, well, here's your cut. <laughs> here's your commission, right? Uh, so just the theory there, you know, it seems like every country is doing it. They're all jumping off bridges with howitzers. Uh, Al Al Luna three three seven seven. Thank you for the Ninja Gini over on D Live. Kishara says consider buying gourds and bamboo. 
Uh, very, well, very useful things, actually. And then V Night VNC next few years will be exciting to see. Thanks, all. I kind of feel like that way, too. It's like a car crash. You don't want to see it happen, but you can't look away. Yobi, Lisa K23, defrustrated. Thank you, Marf Dex. All stop the distract. Wake up. The, uh, yes, I agree. Uh, Casey Smalls, thanks for following. If that's Casey Smalls, thanks for following. Nice to see you. And then Christian End Times, uh, thank you. O Onitis says the last call, Onitis J. Bodon. Good luck to, to all with the coming times. Yeah. Thank you from Canada. I appreciate that. And then Simply Pony, again, thank you for the kitty emoji. And then K Rec, uh, thank you so much for the uh, super sticker there. And then Vibron says 100. Um, Dex, we have just a crazy amount of, of web only here because there's basically a ton of really freaky stuff going on in, in politics. You want to go over that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it, it, we've covered it for the last couple of days, but uh, it was officially signed today that Disney is losing uh, their self-governing rights. So that's that's a done deal. And uh, you can get the, the lowdown there, although the lowdown is a signature. Um, but that that's a done deal and over with. Um, uh, Cawthorn has some crazy pictures, uh, definitely too hot for TV, that uh, have come out. There's some other... Uh, smoking bang bang so to speak audio clips that have come out of other uh publicans that are out there um and so go take a look at that if you're if you're curious of what's happening in the political space it's it's on both sides it's not this is not necessarily just a one-sided area here so uh get this secret service they have no records of what goes on in delaware um, I don't know if that's normal, but apparently that's in the news. So they've come out and said, yeah, they have no records of anybody in any meetings and anybody in or out uh, when our administration is in Delaware. Um, that sounds kind really of fascinating weird. there. That sounds really weird. <laughs> it doesn't it? <laughs> so, and especially since it, the guy spends a ton of time there, right? A ton. Um, lots of other things happening, some court rulings, especially going on with Puerto Rico uh mtg is being going through hearings because they're trying to keep her from running and some crazy outtakes from that are going on um and plenty of other things uh even updates on the border from the uh mexico side and what the government's doing there too so um and everybody's favorite doctor uh sarcasm is in the news again although he's been in quite a bit but go take a look marfuglenews.com click on the thumbnail for the and, show scroll and down to web only content Go ahead. And by the way, the we didn't add any of the uh, the Johnny Depp trial. If you have been watching it, um, unfortunately, my wife has been watching it, and uh, my sister and other people that uh, that have like had crushes back when he was doing Edward Scissorhands. A lot of um, I feel like a lot of people that were born in the seventies and eighties had this huge crush on Johnny Depp. Obviously, he was the teen heartthrob at one point. Uh, so there are tons of people watching this and I did, I have caught a bunch of it. Um, we didn't put that in any of the stuff because I feel it's a huge distraction, but I will say I have sat there and gone, man, that woman seems evil. What do you guys think about the trial? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've been watching it, it, it will suck you in because it's like, it's Johnny Depp basically being an actor. And then this woman basically just being Sanduku eyes, all crazy, I don't know. Do you are you on her side or on his side? There's parts on both that make him look like he's a you know drugged out jerk, and then there are parts that make her look like she's just a selfish, snobby, kind of doesn't care about anybody uh, person. What do you think if you even did care? You, Go ahead. Did you see the photograph with the ice cream? No, wait. Um, yeah, there, was, there of, uh, was a photograph that came out. I want to say it was today and it's him laying back with his eyes closed and ice cream in his lap that's melting and pouring down over the sofa. And I guess the debate between, you know, the interrogation, not the interrogation, but the, the cross examination. examination was you were passed out. <laughs> well, no, I was sleeping, you know, and it's like, okay, well, which one is it? Is he passed out or is he sleeping? Of course, the age old debate, you always say you're sleeping when you may be passed out, but it, you know, that, what, it's that kind of stuff. What comes first? That picture was... <laughs> that picture was pretty bad. 
the sleeping or or the ice cream cone? What what which came first, right? Well, I think he got some exactly. ice cream and then he uh, nodded out. So that's probably what happened. But but the argument. If is, anybody wants to see it, I'll add it to the page so it's there. That I got the article. For so that one. but he's basically like um, the argument is: is he a wife beater or is he? Um, is he, does he self destruct and like punch a wall rather than somebody else? And um, is she like out to get him? Uh, it's crazy. But I I didn't realize that whole court case is her him suing off of her article. But her article doesn't specifically say his name, so I don't think like my wife thinks it's not going to go anywhere because it's suing her based on an article that doesn't actually say his name. He's not suing her for any of the other stuff she said. He's suing her for that official uh, article that came out, and that is the reason he lost all of his jobs, his his fantastical beast thing, uh, the whole nine yards. Oh, and you know what? You want to hear something else that I think is absolutely wrong, unrelated, but kind of related to the Fantastic Beasts and Johnny Depp. J.K. Rawlings is not being mentioned on BBC's like top 700 writers or whatever. It's the most influential 400 books in in history. And they're purposely leaving out Harry Potter and J.K. Rowling because J.K. Rowling made the comments about man and woman. How do you leave Harry Potter out? And I cannot, I just, it still hurts me. I, I hope, J.K., if you're ever watching this, I'm so sorry you went through all that for your opinion. We should never, uh, I mean, I read one of the, uh, I, I read all of those books when I was a kid and I, uh, and again, I was probably when I, they first came out, probably sixth grade, seventh grade. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was even older dr- reading those things. The books are better than the movies. So yeah, it's a good thing. The, uh, it's a good thing. Her, the, the theme park or the theme rides, uh, for Harry Potter are at universal and not Disney. Cause we know it would have probably happened there. Yeah. It would have canceled it. Um, we should, they should have, instead of, uh, it's a small, small world, they should have cancel culture and have, uh, I said this and then have little versions of, uh, Cara Dune and like, I said this and I said that and now I'm gone down the drain, you know, and then have JK Rowling's like, it's a really canceled world. It's time for the shout tro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shout tro.
Hey, I turn up the table. 